don't think this is uh, very, very, uh, let's see. So phi is a homomorphism. Okay, and let's assume continuous. I will have something to say about the non-continuous case, but uh, maybe later. And it's, it's not central to the discussion because uh, proving that it is continuous actually involves other kinds of tools. So first you have to prove measurable, which involves some measure theory. In fact, some actual, like some Steinhaus property, then you have to use Lucin, some words, okay? Uh, but uh, assume that it is continuous, that is fine. Right. And show phi z is equal to z to the n for some n. Right. Ah, so the image is in S1. That's what you want to say. Yeah. That is easy. So that let me write that. So this is a very important theorem as we understand all of us understand. I hope that this is a very important theorem because this is a stepping stone, you know, to go into GLV. If you want to, this is what this is GLC. Okay. So Arnab, I don't know if you have watched that uh, class, but uh, this is what we are doing right now. Okay. And this is an example of a character, which is uh, important in Galva theory. But this is like a group theory question at the moment, okay? Right, and when I say homomorphism, uh, of course, uh, we know what it means, but I'll just write it. Sorry. Okay, right, yeah. Yeah, there is, uh... right, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's probably a good thing to do. Uh, but uh, okay, to find the kernel, it's fine. Okay, so this is what we are trying to prove. Okay, I means sorry, this is what we have, and this is what we are trying to. Prove. My sorry, something is wrong. Wait, my name is written here for some reason. Anyways, okay. Okay, yes, yes. So how to do this? Ah, so what uh, observation we made is image of phi is inside S1, okay? And this is because if the, so if mod of phi z is bigger than one, right? Then it implies that, uh, right, iterate, uh, right, exactly. Uh, yes, yeah. So then this sequence would be unbounded. Or, yeah, so this sequence is unbounded. And similarly, if it is less than one, then it goes to zero, which also we are disallowing, it's C star. So for us, zero and infinity are sort of uh, equal, have equal status in this problem. So this means that the mod of phi z should be equal to one. Okay. So that is fine. So I'm not erasing this just because it's very easy. Oh, yes. So, same reason. I, I use the fact that it's compact, right? So, this thing goes to zero, and this implies that limit 
phi z to the power n which is equal to phi of limit of z to the power n which may not have a limit but along sub along some subsequence it will have because it is compact right this is equal to zero i mean i'm sorry yeah this this is equal to zero so then you will get that phi of some z naught is equal to zero but you are in c star Yeah, so it's so as uh, Vaishnavi said, like the compactness basically we are using in different ways. Probably a better answer is there, but this is the answer I have. So we have already used the continuity. Yeah, so I think, uh, so there is this fact, right? That roots of unity are dense in S1. Maybe we can use this. So if you consider all roots of unity for all n, all roots of unity over all n, and this is dense. Is this correct? Something like algebraic numbers are dense. Something like that. So when you vary k and n, then this is a dense subset of S1. Uh, this should be elementary. Because I think for roots of unity, we can show that it is like this. Z going to Z to the end. Yeah, this is correct, right? The roots of unity are dense. Because it's the it's just like rationals are dense in zero comma one. Right? So if you take zero. So, so how do you prove it? Right, exactly. So that theta you bring, right, right, exactly. And so you have k by n, right? And then this distance is less than epsilon, you can make. And then that distance, you know, there it will be, 
Right, and and this function theta going to e to the power i theta, this is distance. I mean, it's a Lipschitz continuous function, right? It's a distance preserving function, right? So it it doesn't magnify the distance, maybe up to a factor of two pi. Is it clear to everyone? Okay, so I mean, all that I'm just leaving. But roots of unity of dense is a standard fact. You can take it and prove it separately. Probably better things can be said. I mean, like maybe some Diophantine approximation. You know how what routes, uh, what you can use to, how fast you can go and so on. But yeah, that's, this is not, uh, we don't need that here. These two facts. Yeah, this is the reason why this is more involved. For example, I suppose all of you know, I mean, uh, all of us can prove that if you have function from R to R, uh, a homomorphism from R to R, right? Uh, instead of uh, this kind of thing, with this property, then that implies, of course, that phi is nothing but phi 1. So, some, uh, sorry, yeah, what am I saying? Uh, what am I saying? Phi one X, right? This is easy. I mean, of course, using continuity plus continuous, then you get this. This is that kind of statement. So I, I wonder if we can, because we can linearize S1, right? We can linearize, so we can, what we can do is we can replace S1 by, by, of course I can replace it by R mod Z, the group R mod Z. because otherwise it won't form a group, right? I want it to be a group. But yeah, I'll just, I'll just replace it by R. I don't need R mod Z and all that. That structure is not needed, I suppose. Yeah, so uh, I will not erase this question, but I will just say that uh, equivalently, you have a homomorphism from R plus. Of course, R plus, there is no R. Uh, R is only one natural group structure. If you're taking all of R, to C star and call this also by phi. Yes. And so this will be of what form? The claim is that this is of the form Z going to. Yeah, but yes, 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 I'm sorry. So we do need R mod Z, otherwise we won't capture the compactness of S1, right? So we do need R mod Z and the precise statement should be R mod Z only. Yeah, uh, is, is my point, uh, yeah, so, okay. And uh, uh, this uh, implies that uh, phi, phi, now it's a real number, is e to the power i n x. Look, it's the same question, I've not done anything. Probably just, Right? Hmm. Okay, so uh, if this helps, mm -hmm. the now I, I can of course now consider the complex logarithm, but there is a small problem, right? In considering the complex logarithm that I need to, I need a simply connected domain, right? I need to delete a line in order to have a complex logarithm. Then I'll be done if I can just take, if you allow me to take log of this function, then I can just use this Cauchy thing, uh, this Cauchy functional equation thing, this thing. Or uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. 
Yes. So, so just, uh, yeah. So for that, we just need to consider what is this map? What is this map? Right. I mean, that is all I sort of not said. I did not say that. If you just consider what this map is, which you know is x going to e to the power i x, or I'm sorry, maybe maybe 2 pi i x, I'm not writing 2 pi, but this also is correct, it's not wrong. Oh yeah, I mean, actually it is wrong. It should be 2 pi i because I'm saying z and not 2 pi z, but you understand. <clears throat> so if you consider what that map is, then it will be clear that it should be this. Okay. And now, now the functional equation that this phi, the yellow phi satisfies, the yellow phi satisfies this functional equation. Uh, what functional equation? This function. Okay. And uh, now, if I just can uh, consider log phi then my problem will be solved because I will use the methods from here, right? Because for all rationals, I can prove it, right? I, for all rationals, I can prove that, uh, uh, you know, so if, how do you prove this? If you go back to the proof of this, then you will solve this problem. Provided you are allowed, you can take a log, but the problem is you cannot directly, it means you have to do some explanation because log is then not a function. If you consider all of C, then log is not a function. You have to delete, I'm just repeating, you have to delete, uh, I mean, that can be said in possibly complicated ways, but in order to define log, certainly you have to delete a line, to delete a line, right? So that it becomes sheets of a Riemann surface. Otherwise it will, when you come back, you get a different value, it's not a function. So for that, you have to go back and read uh, complex logarithms, or we can discuss it separately. And then if you call this your G, of course, this will still be continuous. And basically this now is, uh, is now is redundant because you know, you're back to the rationals <laughs> for which you can prove. Uh, I was doing it for roots of unity. And then you are sort of done, right? If you use the methods of this because you have to use the methods, not the fact, because this is uh, not R anymore, it is C, okay? But uh, it will be done. <clears throat> Let us now see if we can somehow use the logarithm. Can we explain? I think locally if also we can do Yeah, we said that the range is compact, right? But the range is a uh, very, very strange. It's still S one, right? And that's not a uh, means. It could be it could be surjective onto S one, right? So we can't really delete. Yeah, I mean you can do it. I suppose you you can make two cases. You make a case when this pi is surjective, and probably there maybe. There is a different proof there. But if phi is not surjective, then you understand, right? Then you can you can delete this line, some line. And then you can play your logarithm. All we need is a function from C to C which takes multiplication to summation. Right? And for that you need a domain to be missing a line. But yeah, probably. Of course, logarithms are very useful and sometimes uh, it may look like a fancy way to do things, but they are actually necessary. Like even if we we do manifolds, Lie group, then you have Lie algebra, then the, it is a logarithm which helps you to translate between those two things. And uh, I mean, so my point is that even though logarithm is some seems like a convenience, but it's sometimes actually game changing. Okay, let's see. 
yeah let's try a bit more and then maybe we can uh, look at some solutions somewhere it certainly is a theorem reminding all one dimensional representations of s1 so let's let's say that uh, yeah let's take this root of unity okay so phi of e to the power 2 pi k by n sorry yeah this thing m All right, yeah, so this will be surjective. This phi will be surjective, actually. That's another claim. I'll just give you a rough reason, and then you should prove this and, and check if it's correct, actually, and tell me. So the reason I'm saying is that you have to use the fact that it's a group homomorphism. So phi of S1 is a subgroup of S1, right? Now, subgroup okay so the yeah, subgroups of s1 are either finite finite cyclic or dense again just like it happens in r right uh, subgroups are either cyclic or dense right subgroups of r here it will be finite cyclic you can check why cyclic will become finite cyclic so it's either cyclic or it is dense which translates in s1 case we are using the first observation that is either finite cyclic or it is dense. Finite cyclic, uh, you can maybe prove using, of course, using continuity that it is not possible. I mean, unless it is trivial, right? You can prove that. Using continuity, you show that it's not possible to be finite unless it's trivial. So it is dense. Now using compactness and continu continuity and compactness, whatever, yeah. Using compactness or using just the image is closed, the image is compact, compact is closed. So in fact, it's a closed map, right? Uh, you get that the image is closed, to closed and dense, so it is all, so it is S1. So phi is surjective, okay? <clears throat> phi is surjective onto S1. Uh. <clears throat> yes. Yes, and I think uh, now it is almost done because what you can do is you know that the, I mean, not, I shouldn't say now, probably that's a miss, wrong word. But what I'm just saying is that try to, so we found a way to get from the interval or R mod Z, uh, interval with a group structure. We went from the interval with a group structure to this. Now you can try to, you know, try to get an, I mean, this is a, you can do an inverse. Okay. So try to cook up an inverse and this inverse will be like a logarithm. And then you will get a functional equation like this. You see my point, right? You take phi and you apply this map. 
this is not a logarithm but uh, but you know what i'm saying right something like e to the power i theta to theta that map just on the boundary there might be some problem but just you add, do a c and you will be having this kind of equation and then you will be done by this actually by this exactly you won't even need to go to c because we have proved here that the image is s1 yeah subjectivity is probably useless here but it just gave me the idea okay that it is s1 <laughs> it's already s1 but you see my point right so all this mixture of things and this is easy so it's it's basically coming from that thing only and continuity is is the extra thing <clears throat> okay is that fine just uh Oh yeah, because you will get this kind of equation, right? If you believe that you will get this kind of equation, then you will get what? You will get, uh, you will get uh, x going to n x kind of thing, right? Because you see, right? If you get this kind of equation, then you will get x going to phi one x. But then you prove that that phi one has to be an integer again because you are on a circle some elements have order finite order you have to loop back right so x so it will be that you have to you have to work it out i mean it won't be just directly like that but you will get x is going to phi nx this g will be of the form x going to phi nx and that will if you work backwards uh, the map that you applied here and the map that you applied here x going to, to the if you work backwards and just i mean apply inverses then you will get this just like we translated, right? X, this we translated already to this. Okay, so that n will be the analog. Analog of that n will be this phi one. This phi one now will not be any ordinary phi one, because of all these things, because of finite order. Some, so this extra cyclic, the extra compactness is giving you all this. Okay, is it? Yeah. So just uh, think about it and. Yes, and of course about the continuity. So, but maybe we will uh, postpone that discussion, right? We will get back to a more Galva theory, right? Is, I, is that fine? I, I first we complete this proof and then we can talk about uh, the continuity. Why is it continuous? Okay, it's a very uh, deep uh, thing. Actually, that it without, even without assuming because okay, maybe I, I have I want to say it, so I'll just say it. Yeah, so. The, the the point is that uh, if if you look at this yeah if you look at this and then if you look at all solutions of this from r to r okay of course you get uh, phi x without i'm saying without continuity of course these are solutions okay yeah, of course these are solutions it's just right there check it but also some solutions are space filling curves. Of course, space filling curves are very important. Okay. Uh, probably uh, with some axiom of choice or something. Not very certain of that. There are solutions. So there are solutions which are, uh, which can fill the space or the solution will be dense in, I mean, I wouldn't say the solution. I'm sorry. Yeah, the graph. The graph would be dense in R2, so, I mean, some analog of that, okay? Don't take this very precisely, okay? So you get all kinds of bad solutions, but if you, uh, yeah, so for that, let me actually uh, show you from a book because I'm not very certain of what I'm saying now. So I'll just take two minutes and show you and then we'll move to Galva theory. So I remember seeing this, of course, it's a very big result. That if I think it's even if even it becomes holomorphic without any assumption, that's a, but that's a very big result actually. I think it's a, it's a very it's, it's usually in papers, and, and like some some major result. It was a major result. So, uh, so once I asked my complexness his professor, he told me he'll give some reference, but he did not. And I mean I also did not try to find later because of time, but uh, maybe if one of you wants to uh, tell me, I'll be ready to. That will be maybe easier. Yeah, so there is a book by Karts Nelson. So of course, uh, I don't know if I have it. Harmonic Analysis. 
Yes. So of course he has a linear algebra book also, Cards Nelson, uh, and the, of course uh, he is a master. He is the Abel Prize winner or Abel Prize winner, and he, in his book uh, I read some other books on harmony. Not books, I'm just some portions of both these things. But if you, I, I want to show you something. Yeah, it will be in the first chapter only. I never got through to the later chapters, so I. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, normal extensions, yeah, wait. So, all oh, right, right. No, but this is not that book. Wait, you won't find normal extensions here. But just give me two minutes. I'm just trying to find uh, the connections to continuity. Uh, have a look at this. Uh, denote by C star the multiplicative group of complex numbers. T star be the subgroup with this. So this is the T star is because they want to call it a one torus. Okay, two torus, you know, is S1 cross S1. That's the actual torus. But prove that if G is a subgroup of C sub G is compact, then G is in T star. This is what kind of we used, right? But we kind of proved it ourselves. Kind of, we already proved it ourselves. Uh, compact property of the G is finite and determined its structure. C, compact proper, which means that if it is not proper, then it is S1. So if it's either, either finite, so this is also I said, right? In, in some, uh, maybe in some other way, but okay, let's come to the main matter. Yeah, prove that a continuous homomorphism from T into C star is necessarily given by the exponential function. So if you assume continuity, does everybody see this is the exact problem that we were doing? Hello, is it visible or no? Or is it not visible? Okay, right. So this is the exact problem which we were doing, problem number 11, right? Prove that a continuous homomorphism from T into C star is necessarily given by the exponential function. I mean, he's calling it exponential function, but you know, I mean, he, his T is probably that R mod Z, but it's understood, yeah. But it's continuous. Now he does some set theory. I, I, we can talk about that later. Ah, look at this. Show that measurable proper subgroups of T have measure zero. Okay. So, you know, not just sub, uh, uh, I mean, so they won't, uh, I'm sorry, a measurable proper subgroups of T have measure zero. Right, yeah, so this has a meaning. I mean, uh, let me not say because they are saying that the dense ones are not measurable. But anyways, show that measurable homomorphism from T into C star this. And uh, let F, wait. Oh, then this doesn't go there. Uh, yeah, he doesn't go to continuity, I'm sorry. F is measurable, so that for all values of n, f hat n is uh, four here, so you won't know that maybe. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, he he is not going into continuity, but uh, I'm thinking that measurable implies continuity. Anyways, okay, it's not, uh, but but the, but you see there are some uh, yeah deeper, so you can look at that book. Uh, just uh, show show you the book title, you can. Just look at it. If you want to read harmonic analysis, read this. Read this book. This guy is a. This person is a master. Okay, so yeah. I'm closing. It, okay, yeah. So now let us uh, get to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that that, that was uh, just a detour and. Yes, so now we need to go to Patrick Morandi. Yeah, of course, I gave some other problems also, but maybe we'll not discuss them today. Yes, uh, Arnab, so you were talking about normal extensions, right? Right. Yeah, let me 
see where we are in the book because actually last time we did the independence of characters so we would have liked to use it to prove the you know like there cannot be too many characters which basically in for us the importance is that there cannot be too many automorphisms fixing f which gives an upper bound on the galba group and then using normality we get the equality uh yeah but uh, then where is normal extensions normal extensions is leaving this whole sections and going to the next section <coughs> hmm. no but so have you have you done section number 2 we are almost done okay Uh, let me decide because if you do normal extensions in the beginning, there is not nothing to do much. It's just some abstract thing. Yeah. So well, yeah, I think uh, we will not do normal extensions today. We will continue with this, right? We will continue with proposition 2.13. Right? Or, yeah. That I think that's better, right? And since you have already read it, so maybe you can make it faster, right? So, yeah, let's do that. Because uh, suddenly jumping to, yeah, let's see. So, so we have done independence of characters, right? Now we want to apply. So, apply. So we'll do this quickly, this section, because my go main goal is to do the problems because the chapter there is not, you can just read, right? You can just do reading, but apply independence of characters. Let's understand the ideas. I should have written application of independence of characters. And the, the the application is so basically you see Arnav. So normal extensions, of course, they are the thing that make other make make the thing Galva. But uh, we're just studying what are the things that come before that, right? So that uh, so that so that you can see what 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 all is true without Galva, without the extension being normal. Let's say. Okay, so. Of course, uh, I suppose this book is dealing with finite extensions. So till till this point, so we just have that implicitly. So the size of this, which is size of the automorphisms of K, which fix F, that size is less than the degree of the extension. Can we just quickly prove this? Maybe Arnav, you can tell us the proof. I've read it, not read it. <clears throat> yeah. This is just linear algebra. I mean, just everything is over fields and vector spaces. Yeah, yes. So again, this is just saying that uh, there are not too many characters. So first of all, you can see, like if I write tau one, just copying from the book, tau n, right? If this is equal to this, okay, first you first, Observe that this tau i are characters. And in what way? So they are maps from k star to k star. 
right so the g is k star okay and the k is k uh, group homomorphisms so the multiplicative structure but also they are they are also a by they are also by uh, they are also bijective okay? but maybe we won't use that so this this is important because later when you do Galois theory over rings, right? Integral Galois theory over rings, then for example, Lang has the next chapter Galois theory over ring, rings after his Galois theory chapter. So then there may be some more abstract things. Then the bijection and all will not come because you can have kernels. Yes. So what should we do next? Right. Uh huh. Right. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Good. Mm. That's fine. That's okay. Rank of A is less than or equal to M. So that is because the rank of a matrix is less than the row less than or equal to the row size and less than or equal to the column size. That is true for any matrix. It has nothing to do with this matrix. Nice. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, wait, 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 sorry. So you, do you want to prove, so that's like, you're saying what you've read, that's good. But uh, do you want to prove that the row rank is equal to N? That the rank is equal to N? Do you want to prove that the rows are independent? You don't know, no problem. So we, you just, you, you just do, you just say what you were saying. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. We should think about it, right? Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas how to do this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, only the inequality is true. The equality is not true here at this point. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, so. Uh -huh. Okay, fine. So you you want to you want to say, you want to assume n is bigger than m, right? Okay. So if you assume that n is bigger than m, then you get that the rows are independent. Right, it implies that the rows are dependent. Uh, right, so let's do that. Summation, right. Uh, okay, wait. No, so that's a bit. So you see, when you say I alpha J, uh, wait, it's all oh, right. So that's what you were saying. Sorry, yeah. So like this, right? C from the matrix, right? I alpha one and summation C I alpha two alpha M is that correct? Yeah, this is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And this will, after working it out, you will see that C1 tau 1 plus C2 tau 2 plus C, no. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's right. I get that. Uh, but I... Yes, yes, that's a contradiction, but I have yet to understand the intermediate step which i wrote myself so how how does this imply this Okay, yeah. So you have to separate it. Right, right. Ha, huh, and you write it. Uh, correct, yeah. Right. So le yeah, le yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me write what you're saying because yeah. So you take a member, uh, let's say beta. Is it fine? Beta from k star, and you write beta as summation a j alpha j and now you want to evaluate this
you want to show that this is zero. Okay, so how, how do you show it is zero? Inside? Okay. I mean, okay, fine. That's the same thing. So, okay, I'm writing J. Uh, okay, fine. I should write I actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Ah. Uh. No, now you use this to say that it is zero. Yes, 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 yeah. This this is zero, right? This is zero for every i, right? So it is zero. This proves that, this proves this. Is it clear? Is it fine, everyone? Yeah? It's this, right? We get this is zero. And now you say the boy dead kidney lemma, it's a contradiction. Fine? Good. That's a proof. Yeah. I mean, uh, if this proof, if you say properly, that's also a good. It's a good proof, right? I mean, it's a proof. Like you said it. So it's uh, fine. Yeah. I mean, of course, uh, we can all prove these things. Okay. <laughs> we can all sit and uh, take our time and we can all prove these things. But we want to do it like, uh, you know, uh, we want to do as it's uh, along the flow, along the way someone is doing or just uh, understand someone's idea and that's very important, right? When you read a book, you understand the author's idea, what he's saying, then you know what he's going to say next, right? So it's very important to, uh, otherwise, of course, there are other proofs. There are many proofs, but they will probably all be similar. But it's a bit, uh, it's a bit interesting because you see, if you look at these tau eyes, right? We are not just using the fact that these are characters. Yeah, does everybody see that? We are not just using the fact that these are characters. We are also using the fact that these are linear homomorphisms. Right? That is why we, so the, because they are characters, they are linearly independent. That's one, one direction, right? That's one, the multiplicative direction is telling us that. But because they respect the linear structure, the additive structure, because of that, we are able to say, that that these are linearly independent right uh, is that is that correct yeah uh wait let me say let me see that again because that that uh, crystallizes the idea right so if i have this matrix we assume that the rank is less than or equal to m no, sorry, the rank is less than or equal to. I mean, like, I think that's what Aditya is trying to say that if you don't assume contradiction, is it, does it, can you still just say it? I mean, I understand these are all same proofs. I, I will not agree that this is a new or easier proof or harder proof. But, but I, I, maybe I'll agree that like one can say it in a more crystallized form. I mean, it's, um, yeah. So I think let's try to say that. Let's try to say like that. So if we take n, so n less than m is what we have to show. Now, if we just, we get this n by m matrix. Okay, let's say if we, let's say, let's say we are okay with writing the matrix. Maybe you want to avoid writing the matrix also, it's fine. But let's say we write the matrix. Then, Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, so uh, you can, the proof is done, so you can leave, and I'll also just stop in five minutes. Yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next time we can start at 7.30 or something. Yeah. <clears throat> and end by 8.30, yeah. But anyways, you can... Yeah, we can talk about it. It will probably be... We'll see. Yeah. Okay, we can, we can talk about it on Saturday. Yeah. I hope Saturday is fine. But no, I, I just want to stand this so if we if we don't assume anything if we just write n and m and we write this matrix so we know that the rank is less than equal to m okay Right. And then if we just say that, I understand, I'm sorry, I'm probably sounding very stupid. I'm repeating the same thing, but I'm just trying to understand it. Okay. So if you can bear with me for anyone, you can, otherwise you can also, anyone can leave. It's fine. But yeah, so yes. nothing. Nothing. Why Why are you assuming separability? It's not Galva. It's, I said that, I, I think I said, no, it's not Galva. The extension is not Galva. When you said that we can prove at least one direction easily, I said that the other direction is not even true. Because this extension is not Galva. Okay, yes, that is just, so, yeah, so that, I am sorry, maybe I did not say it in this class, but uh, in this discussion, but earlier uh, we have mentioned that this gal, uh, Vaishnavi, I hope that is uh, it's fine to you. Uh, Galva here just means the, the automorphism, so K fixing F, the Galva group, right? Galva group extends for, exists for any extension. It doesn't, doesn't mean the extension is Galva. Extension being Galva and a field extension having Galva group, we are treating them as two different things. I understand it might be a little confusing, but it might be a little different from other notations, but that's what notation we are using. And we are following Patrick Morandi. He also uses that notation. Is that okay? I hope uh, this is fine. Vaishnavi, is it fine with you? I. Uh, I suppose it's fine with you because uh, I think on Sunday when we were doing that proof, uh, Galva group for SN, I think you saw that uh, that we're using this note. I understand, but yeah, and that is why we are maybe <laughs> we are uh, working, but uh, yeah, we are not assuming. So. But yeah, I mean, if you can find an easier proof for a normal separable extension, you can tell us. But yeah, I, I maybe maybe. You, you can, yeah, maybe there is a, you can prove equality if normal extension, but I don't think that the proof is simpler. This side is simpler if you have Galva also. I don't think. But again, simpler is a subjective term, so let's not get there. Yeah, so this is just automorphisms of K fixing F, and we are following Patrick Morandi. I understand notational difference can be a nightmare. And I, I agree. But we have to uh, learn to be flexible in that way. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. So these characters are independent, right? So these are independent, and if I now claim that the rows are independent, the rows are in, which is what we proved, right? The rows are independent. But even before proving that, we can say it. But notice that here we are not just using the fact that these tau i's are characters. We are using the other structure. We are using the additive structure to say that the rows are independent. Right? Because if the rows are, uh, because if the rows are dependent, then uh, the linear combination on the basis, we are using that to produce linear combination on anything, on any element of k. That's what Arnav was telling us. So the rows are independent. <clears throat> so this implies that uh, RKA is equal to N, and that is less than equal to M. And so we are done.
So maybe this is a conceptually simpler proof. But uh, one has to have that, one has to see that the additive structure can be used to say the rows are independent. I think this crystallization of ideas is important. So at least, yes. So then we are, we are done. Yeah. Yes. Right. And one can actually avoid the matrix also. One can just uh, consider uh, functions from this uh, function. You can just consider a linear map from this to Rm, right? Where you just take a take an element and you just evaluate it, right? It means it's the same thing as this matrix, but I'm just saying that you can just write it completely in, in the form of abstract linear algebra language. Right, you take the sigma and you just send it to its encoding, right? And why is uh, evaluating it at the basis and encoding for sigma or for this element for an element of the Galois group? Why is it an encoding? Why is this an injective homomorphism? Because this was because this sigma are linear. So knowing them at a basis, or if you're doing Galois theory over rings, knowing them over a generating set, or if you are somewhere in the middle, somewhere doing something, you can still use these ideas, right? We have talked about, I mean, these things can be actually very difficult sometimes. Right? If if you have AN to AM, try to prove this. Uh, it's probably the hardest problem in Atia McDonald. Uh, AN to AM, uh, you have a map, the free modules, injective proof that N is less than M. The same same kind of thing, but try proving it. It's a night. It's a difficult proof. It's a difficult proof. I heard someone say that this is the hardest problem. It's in chapter two, problem number eleven, I think. Yeah, I remember it because I have str struggled a long time. But but anyways, I mean theories have developed over this some some things like dedicate. In fact, that in fact some those things are called dedicate finite modules and things like that, which oh, I don't know if it's related with this dedicate. There's some deep uh, some deep things going. On. But here it is all simple because you're working over fields. But you don't want to be working over fields all your life. And of course, in a sense that, in a sense that we are obviously going to work in other. We are going to have to maneuver to other places. Okay, so we'll just stop here quick because I uh, have to go. So okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye. Thank you.